All right, what's going on? You can see behind me, got a little pegboard, got some shells built, all this type of stuff. Got me a shop now to work on fishing stuff. I've been doing it just kind of wherever I can do it. In the boat, on the floor, all over the place. Disorganized, it's never a little bit more organized, but it's cold. Still it's a little chaotic. Still a little chaotic, haven't got it all put up yet. Ordered some more pegs for the pegboard and that's gonna be what helps me uh, actually end up getting it organized. So right now, all that stuff up there, has to be hung up eventually. But working on some stuff right now for, it's winter, you know, right now it's around Christmas time. Fish are in a very specific mood in this area. I've been fishing a ton lately. Not really a ton, I've been fishing a decent amount though. Just got back from Lake Lanier. Obviously they bite a certain type of way there, up there for three days. Caught them pretty good, caught a bunch of three and a half pounders. Nothing real big, but uh, just a ton of three, three and a half pound spots in that place. And some good largemouth too, three, three and a half pound largemouth are you know, decently common in certain areas as well. But I get you. caught on live scoping most of them. We did do a no electronics challenge for three hours where obviously all the grass were turned off except for mapping. We had map of the lake because none of us really knew the lake and was having a little challenge. So we had to leave the map on and we ran up the river. You know, I don't want to say much, but well, fish with no electronics for a while. It. It's going to be probably a month or so it'll be released. The videos it'll be like three hour long videos that we filmed so it'll be cool it, it will be cool it was fun though definitely fun love catching them on live scope like, it's a very fun way to catch them you know uh, it's one of my favorite ways to catch them when i'm not in a tournament in a tournament it gets frustrating sometimes but you know i really like catching them other ways more but i have really enjoyed kind of getting better at live scope in the off season for the past two or three seasons so it's been fun but right now fishing around the house Live scope has been mostly a spotted bass deal. You know, you catch some larger through there once in a while, but for the most part, catch a spot. The spots are really just kind of a supplement. But the bad, the big bass have been typically biting jigs. I've been tying a bunch of ace heads with rubber, some ace with silicone skirts when come on stock, all that type of stuff, and experiment with trailers and all that different type of stuff. And it seems like they just bite it no matter what I put on back of it. But anyways, been doing that. Got see, I got hanging up right there. Crankbaits, flat sides, you know, shallow running ones, square bills, all that type of stuff has been a big player this time of year. So I mean, that's just how stuff gets worn around here. When that muddy, when that water gets a little bit stained up, even if it's not stained, catch them really good on jerk bait, catch them really good on a jig. If it gets stained up, catch them really good cranking, winding a lot of different stuff, spinner baits, chatter baits, all that type of stuff is a big player. So that's what I've been working on. Got a little bench right there with stuff laid out on it, a little strode all the time. If y'all can see the amount of rod. Oh, we got a bunch of rods. I, I actually rods got a bunch, bunch, bunch of rods. Like you said it I really don't even know. I don't even know. But I got two rod racks right there, which we should show. 13 fishing rod racks of actual rods that have baits on them. Dropping, dropping line, all kinds of stuff. I got a table full of Sunline line. Like I got one box of braid, one box of fluorocarbon. Got stuff absolutely everywhere. But, hey, that's what it is. Organized, stuff like that. So, what should we do? Should we talk about the baits I've been throwing lately? Yeah. The stuff I've been catching them on the best? Well, they're in those boxes right there. Yeah, sure. So let's ease over there and see what, see what we're doing. All right, so first off, this is one of the coolest things I've ever had. You know, it's like straight out of a store. And I've got it now in my shop and I can put whatever I want to on it. So I've got two of them. I got, you know, obviously rods on one. A lot of rods on the other one, but not as many. So this one was actually full of rods. Took them out, put them in the boat just a couple days ago to go to Lake Lanier, because I had, this was most of my dirty water power fishing stuff, swim jigs, jigs, you know, I got Apex, Big Ace, another Apex, you know, a bunch of flat side crankbait stuff right here. On this side, I had a bunch of live scoping stuff. A lot of jerk baits, little swim baits, the Mickey rigs, all that type of stuff was on that one. Now those are in the boat. So trying to keep it organized a little bit, but that's, that's a really cool setup. And obviously I got a bench right here. And this is all the stuff we've been working on. I got, these are flipping jigs. These are ones that basically, after a jig gets a little bit dinged up, a little beat up, you know, I've used it a bunch. I kind of put it in this box and then I fish with it locally in tournaments, stuff like that. And then I have a different box in my boat that has four or five of each color. That's pristine, brand new, everything's perfect on them. And then these are kind of the ones that I fish with a little bit. Just didn't really have a, home for them but I've caught a lot of fish on them and I just kind of put them in this box and I take this box with me whenever I'm home fishing around in the winter just a flipping jig box all that type of stuff this right here is what I've been doing a lot lately 
got just three eighths ounce ace heads. They're tying rubber on those. For me, a couple buddies get some every once in a while. They gotta twist my arm a little bit, but they get one every once in a while. And obviously got a bag of rubber, but still hard to beat the old Dirty Crawl Ace all times of the year. That's the one that, you know, I just kinda have fun tying the rubber and throwing stuff different, but that Dirty Crawl Ace is a really, really good one all the time. So, we got square bills, the water temp still low 50s, like, and it just got low 50s. It's been actually closer to 60 well into December, you know, 56 to 58, well into December. So the square bill bite was really, really good around here. Now it's getting a little bit cold for it, but they will bite it all year. So I've still got a square bill box out, a bunch of different stuff in there, like just a ton of different square bills I throw all the time. Got a DT box, obviously, you know, the six, the eight, the four, all that stuff catch them really, really good, especially in the winter. Got a little bit more of a subtle wag, stuff like that. And then here we've got the balsa box, which this is a little bit I ain't gonna show nothing about this. This is just kind of some stuff that I've got, that very hard to cast, kind of hard to fish with, very finessey sometimes. Sometimes they're super loud, super buoyant, all that type of stuff. That's just kind of one that I throw sometimes whenever it gets a little bit tougher, but it don't really seem to matter that much. I catch them on that, I catch them on a bunch of different baits, you know, in the same exact application, so it's not that important. Another square bill box, and this is where, like, I've had this stuff out just kind of rigging up rods, stuff over here on the side, and then, Obviously, a jerkbait box. I've got two or three of these jerkbait boxes with different sizes, colors, depths, all that type of stuff. I've got two or three jerkbait boxes, but this is the one that I've been throwing a lot recently. You know, these are all my regular jerkbaits that only dive, you know, four to six feet. So that's the ones I have in this. Been tying those little bunch of rods. Been this is the time of year you catch one jerkbait. You know, everybody knows that. So that's kind of the rundown of everything I've been fishing with lately. A lot of jigs, a lot of reaction baits, but it's typically been a lot of cranking, jerking vibrating jig every now and then, spinnerbait every now and then, stuff like that. So that's kind of the rundown of you know, what we've we got have, going over here. We haven't really went through like all the line. I feel like we haven't been in depth in line. We haven't been in depth in line for a while. Yeah. yeah. We, we used to do it a lot more. Yeah. We should, go, we should do that right Yeah. So actually, right here, I've got my trusty Sunline box. We'll move some of this stuff out of the way. Right here. So this is actually the box that I take with me traveling. I've got a tote full of, you know, backup line. And I take stuff with me traveling in this right here. So got a few different things in here. Obviously the line that I like the most is the shooter. This is any type of reaction baits, I'm going to use the shooter. Like, if I, I mean, did I say reaction baits? Mm -hmm. Any type of high impact baits, I'm going to use the shooter. Not really reaction baits, even though I throw the shooter on reaction baits when a lot of other pros don't. That's one of the main things I disagree with other pros on. I don't really disagree. I just do things a little bit differently, but it seems like the more I talk to other pros and become friends with them, and you know, we talk fishing a little bit more, I do a lot of stuff different than a lot of people. So I don't, I mean, if the normal consensus is the right way to do things, seems like I do stuff wrong a lot, but it works most of the time. A lot of 20, a lot of 22, a lot of 25. I got some 10 pound shooter. This is what I use for leader material on spinning reels, spinning rods, whatever you want to call it. If I'm around brush, anything like that, I like that harder, more abrasion resistant line, a little bit more sensitive too, even though that's not a huge factor on that type of application, but I like the shooter for a leader material on the spin rod. I like it for flipping all the time. I never flip with a sniper. I only flip with shooter. I like it for vibrating jigs, spinner baits, everything. I have been using the dough strike lately. Let's see if I got one in here. I've got one somewhere that I just tied it up. I might have used all of those on the spool. It's actually a Brett Height design line for vibrating jigs called Dough Strike or Dough Strike, something like that. But it's actually a little more camouflaged, got a little more stretch to it. So whenever they eat that vibrating jig, you really want to give those fish time to turn with it or just make sure that they eat it good and they're going a different direction than facing you. So that's a really important thing whenever you're throwing a vibrating jig, have a little more stretch, a little bit softer rod. But I have a problem with if I use a softer rod, it's a little bit harder to skip the bait. So I want to use a decently fast action rod if I'm throwing around docks, and then I'll use a line with a little more stretch and actually kind of give me, kind of just play it where I got a little more give one way or another. So this is some of my light line cranking stuff. This is the FC Sniper. I've got some seven pounds, some eight pound, two things of eight pound. You know, throwing super light baits like the balsa baits, the shad wraps, all that type of baits that are very, very difficult to cast. The small little crank baits that they bite in the winter where it's hard to cast them further than 50 or 60 feet. That sniper line really seems to 
cast a whole lot better. It's a lot more manageable. It's a lot more supple. It, it uh, isn't quite as rigid and hard as the shooter. The, the shooter is a very dense, rigid line. Like it doesn't have a lot of play in it. The sniper really casts well, super easy. It kind of has more of a mono -y feel to it where it's super, you know, bendy and that, that's kind of just manageable is the best way to, you know, explain it. But I use that typically only for baits that are really hard to cast. You know, like I'm throwing small little jerk baits or something like that. Just seems like you can cast that sniper a little bit better. But the shooter is what I'm going to trust day in and day out. But it's a very, very expensive line and I understand. So basically in here we've got a bunch of different types of shooters and then a couple different types of snipers. So I do have, I mean I've got shoot, shooter from 8, I got 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25. I've even got 30 in here, which is too big. I've actually only used it to tie bait keepers on flipping hooks. You know, like you've seen the fluorocarbon bait keepers. I've used that to tie it on actually flipping hooks. Only thing I've ever used 34 because it's too big for anything that, I've, that I use. So a lot of this stuff is pretty simple. You know, if I want to be able to have ease of casting, I use a sniper. It's going to be something low impact. Shooter is always, for anything that's impact, grinded on rocks, brush piles, anything like that, it's always, always, always going to be shooter. So that's, that's how I kind of break it down. But I am very, very particular about kind of the line size that I use. I like to scale everything properly for the bait that I'm using because line is one of the things that can really hurt the action of your bait. If you're using too heavy of line, that bait just doesn't have the natural fall and the natural fall rate that it needs to have. So a lot of these smaller baits that are, they might weigh, you know, a quarter of an ounce or something and they have small appendages on them that just create a little bit of action. If you have a heavy line, that bait won't fall the way it's designed to fall, like straight down. So if you tie like a light bait on 25 pound line, that line's gonna create such a drag that the bait won't fall correctly. But if you tie it on 10 pound line or whatever line you want to tie it on that's, you know, actually better for the bait 12 or 14 or whatever, that line won't create such a drag and allow that bait to fall the way it's supposed to fall. So the line creates drag and, the, and you kind of want to scale it based on the bait that you're using. But you never want to be underpowered. If I'm going to throw it around anything at all, if I'm going to flip anything that I'm going to be setting the hook on, unless it's super finesse around cover, it's going to be 20 at least, mostly 22. If I'm flipping over a single limb, I want to be flipping 22 in there. So that's the way that I feel, 22 or 25. But, you know, floating docks, all that type of stuff, you can get down 12, 10, 14, all that type of stuff because there's nothing you're really going over. Until you luckily find a dock cable under there somewhere and you break one off on 12 pound line. But, hey, a lot of times that's gonna happen no matter what line you're using if they rub down that dock cable the wrong way. So, that's also extremely important when you're throwing jerk baits, especially some of the smaller jerk baits or some of the jerk baits like a regular 110 that has a smaller bill on it. Like, a, it seems like when you're using like a plus one style jerk bait that bill's big and the action is just kind of going to be what it is you can get away with going to a 12 or 14 and it seems this is just my personal opinion it seems like it still has relatively close action but if you go down to a small jerk bait or a jerk bait with a small bill that's very very erratic going to a 14 or 16 pound line is really going to impede that action it's going to mute it down a lot it's just going to create so much drag in the water that the bait can't actually kick out the way it's designed to kick out or kick forward the way it's designed to kick forward so that's another thing crankbaits you know like i can take a crankbait that most people throw on 15 pound line it'll run four feet deep and i can put it on 10 pound line and now it'll run six or seven feet deep you know i can take a crankbait that's supposed to dive to six feet put it on 10 pound line on a 7.3 rod where i can launch it and i can get it down there at eight and a half or nine feet deep so that's also another thing is you can get that bait to dive a whole lot deeper it'll cast a whole lot further and it's going to have a little bit more vibration in the water with a little bit lighter line so a lot of those things kind of is just a scale of what makes line important so the properties of the actual line find a couple you got confidence with like i do shooter sniper and then just scale it to get the maximum performance out of all the baits that you're using so you see my braid box anywhere my braid line i don't know where it's at that camo bag yeah it's like it's over there on top you want both of them um one of them has yeah let's get both of them i'll show you all kind of what i was what I was playing with this fall. So this one right here, the one that's kind of roughed up a little bit, this is my actual braid bag that I take with me everywhere. You see, it's got a bunch of stuff in here. I got spin rod braid. This is actually a really cool braid. It's one of my favorite ones that I've been using this year. That's that Defier D braid. That pink line, y'all seen me using. Got a lot of questions there, about this. There has been a lot of questions. A lot of questions on the pink line. This is a super smooth line. Like one of my favorite lines I've ever used for a spin reel. 
Like I love this stuff. It's Super sunline. smooth. Feels really good. Yeah. Sunline Defy Your D-Brake. Really cool. That's 11 pound. That's a little bit light. Got some 13 in here too somewhere. Yeah, got some 13. That's probably the best all around size for fishing in the south. Throwing around brush piles, stuff like that. But for making those really long casts for smallmouth, that little bit lighter diameter stuff is really good. Got some SX1, 12 pound. This is a very, very strong line. This is probably one of the strongest braids I've ever used for the size of it. That four strand, four carrier braid is just super, super strong. It's yellow. It does bleed a little bit more than I would like for it to, but it's a very strong line. You can see it really, really well in the water. That's my, this is my super strong line right here. This is the X Plasma. It's a, I, that's a guy. I think is how I heard most people pronounce it. I can't pronounce it correctly, but this is the 30 pound. Throw this on a lot of lighter baits, stuff like that. I also have 60 and I have 50 in that same braid, SX1. This is something I can't quite show y'all because this is a little prototype, little juicer right there. But SX1 and 50, SX1 and 30, all the different stuff. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling for the day, what line I want to use or what I've been using recently. If I'm casting in, in vegetation that's not matted, I like to use the SX1 because it cuts to the grass a little bit better. Some more SX1, all the type of stuff. So this is the braid that I have. Lots of spinning reel braids in here right now because whenever we ended the season, we went up north and had two or three smallmouth tournaments in a row. So I've got more than an average amount of spinning reel braid in here because I was packing this up to leave and go up there. So kind of what I was doing, X Plasma, SX1, and then a couple little new watch things for spinning reels. Now this is a little bit different. These are some of the lines that I actually put in this bag just to keep them separate so I could try them this off season. So there it is right there, the one I was just talking about. Well, I got a wrong sticker on there. But this is the dough strike right there. That's the one that was camouflaged. This is 16 pound. See it's green, got a little more stretch to it. That's the one that's designed for spin rods. We've got the structure. FC would be a little more brazen resistant. Just a lot of stuff that I was planning on trying this off season. We got the power to see fluorocarbon. Never used it. It's got the orange on it. I mean, it's if you want to see your line, I guess it's good. I've never used it though personally. Crank FC, been using this a lot in this off season. A little bit more stretch to it. It's like the Sniper, but even more manageable. I actually ordered some of this recently in the eight and 10 sizes, because I liked how well it actually casts. So that's probably the line I'm gonna be using for cranking these small little baits a lot coming up. Right now, I've only got it in 12 though. So I got me an order in, got some mono. These are just a lot of different. This is kind of every fluorocarbon that Sunline makes is in this bag right here. And I was just kind of tinkering with them and playing with them in the off season. So a lot of unique stuff in there. Also got some mono in there for some of the old school guys that really like mono, which I have definitely gotten away from, or they call it a nylon a lot of times. There it is right there. There's some of it. Haven't used it at all in the off season. I was planning on it some more Sunline Supernatural. This kind of their base level monofilament so just a lot of stuff in there that i was planning on tinkering with in the off season and i did play with a lot of it you know and just keep going back to i just got so much confidence in the shooter that's what i want to use for almost everything so that's kind of the that's a lot of line information I like. maybe good. well i was just going through it you know that's kind of what i've been tinkering with a lot recently got boo coodles though the shooter and the sniper because that's my that's my bread and butter right there that's what i want mainly the shooter though like i said so that's kind of what we're working on in the shop. You know, lots of crankbaits, jigs, jerkbaits, that kind of stuff. What else we got we were working on? Let's see, frogs, we got three or four frog boxes. I ain't gonna bite that in December probably. No, it yeah, probably won't bite that. We got- Right now, Kyle cannot go fishing without turning his last thing. Yeah, right now. It's like so, a problem actually. Last year or two years ago, a couple years ago when I first got it, I committed in the off season to, I gotta get good with it. You know, because it was, you know, the, it ain't been a it ain't been prominent for that long. So a couple years ago, I committed in the off season that I had a couple techniques I wanted to get good at, and it worked. I weighed in some big fish and some big moments this year on a couple of those techniques, and then I also want to get really good at live scope, and it worked. I think my two best finishes this year, I caught every single one of my fish on live scope on one of them, the and classic was on probably day. half of them. Ha well, probably half or so in the classic were on live scope. At least the first two days, it was at least oh, half. Caught some I caught some going into the last day. I only weighed in one or two on live scope on the last day, but the first two days I had to weigh in half the fish or so on live scope. So a lot of the fish I caught there was live scope. A lot of fish throughout the year I caught was on live scope. And obviously, 
I don't really like fishing that way. It's not as fun to me, but. Don't let him lie, he loves it. No, it's just, it's just like, I wanna be better at fishing. I wanna get better at fishing. I wanna figure out a way to improve. And it feels like, to me, that's the best way for me to improve right now, is live scope. Like, I would be happy if nobody was allowed to use it. I would be completely fine with that. I don't wanna use it. I don't really like doing it that much. But, it's the best way for me to improve at the moment is to keep getting better at live scope because there's nobody that has a 100% understanding of it right now. Even, you know, the best in the world at it. You know, Jacob Wheeler has been winning a ton on live scope and he still has a lot to learn on live scope. And if you ask him, he would tell you that, you know? So, I mean, and I'm not, he's the best at it and there's still a ways to go. So I feel like for me, that's the best way for me to improve. And in the off season, I want to improve. So I've been committed a lot for the last two or three years to getting better at that exact thing. And now I feel like I have a lot of confidence to catch them on it. So do a lot of other pros. So the gap is actually narrowing down. But for me, I like improving. And that's the best way for me to improve. So that's why I've been using it so much in the off season. So, it's also really fun to watch your bait go down and them, and them bite it. Yeah, watch them it's, all it's just swarm fun. up to it. Like whenever they'll be in 40 feet and when your bait gets down to about 25, they'll start looking up off the bottom and then there'll be one of them come up and then one of them come from below him and then like six of them come up it's never, and one of them gonna get it. It's never the first one that comes up to it that bites Never. Them. Almost never. Yep. It does give you a lot of information even if they don't bite and you're catching them on lock up it gives you a lot of information on how they're biting or how they're reacting. How they react to it. And I've seen times where I throw a swim bait in there and they'll follow it and then they'll bite it but I won't hook them. And then I've actually reeled the swim bait in through a Demiki out there and catch them on it and the exact opposite throwing Demiki out there they'll bite it won't catch it one one time actually i had broke off my Demiki on a piece of standard timber so i threw a swim bait out there and i was winding it and the fish came up they bumped it and bumped it and bumped it so i reeled it in real fast took a pair of scissors and cut the tail off the swim bait and threw it right back out there and then caught one of the very next cast so it's just crazy how they'll follow it and they'll act aggressive towards it but they just won't bite one technique one day or another same thing with the jerk bait. Sometimes they want something on the bottom, they want a drop shot, sometimes they'll eat a jig, a lot of different stuff. So there's a lot of different things you can learn about that. And I've struggled on my lakes finding largemouth on it. I catch some on it randomly. I haven't been able to really dial in where the largemouth set up on it, on some of these lakes. Yeah, you okay. caught largemouth. Yeah. We, we, well, we caught four or five that day on it, but I still couldn't pull up to a place and tell you this is going to be a largemouth, which is what I want to happen. Cause that's that's how you win around the house is you got to catch a big largemouth every single time. So I've been trying. It's hard to figure out. Definitely hard to figure out. Seems like when I when I figure it out, I run and I catch nothing but spots. Still. So and spots are good. We we got some big spots now. We got some three pounders. I've been weighing in some three pounders in tournaments lately. But they ain't fives and they ain't sixes. All the big spots are on the Most of the big spots are on the near definitely. But I didn't catch any real big ones this week. Biggest one I caught was uh less than four pounds. So. Didn't catch anything real big. Let us know what y'all want to see while it's cold. While it's cold. You want to see us go freeze out there trying to fish, trying so to catch them? You want to see like setups, how I make it some jigs. Y'all want to get a really good look inside the balsa box and how I do the rubber jig? Because that ain't going to happen. If you get me to 200 million likes, I'll show y'all inside the balsa. 200 million infinity likes. I'll show y'all inside this box and I'll show y'all how I tie a rubber jig. But for real, the rubber doesn't matter. I've uh, broke them off. I broke the jig off, tie on a different one that's silicone, and then still catch them. It really doesn't matter. Just kind of something I like tinkering with because I've always been a tinker. You know, I like I like helping have input on rods, baits, reels, everything. I like to have my input in stuff just because I like playing with stuff and I think about it all the time. So I just kind of like doing it and making sure that it's something that I designed, I build, I put together, then they bite it. So it's pretty cool. Got some new rods coming out from uh, 13. That'd be cool. I got a, I got a decent amount of input in these, and that will be really really cool, really exciting. I've had them, I've had them for a little while now. We're still in the testing phase, but they'll be good. They will definitely be good. Let's know what y'all want to see. So, we done going to the shop, Hunter? Yeah. That's a lot of boxes over there on the shelves. Yeah. Bunch of stuff. It looks a little mixed match. I don't really like how the boxes. Yeah, they're green boxes and blue boxes. I was trying to I was trying to organize it based on what was in the boxes, and then I found another tote full of boxes. So I was like, we just filled it in in the space that was left. 
So it wasn't an optimal thing. I got to go back I through it. I would get out here and organize it, but then I would have you every single day, like 100 words. Like yeah. 100 words. Yeah. Kyle asked me where stuff is, like 35 minutes. Yeah. You didn't move it. I wouldn't have to. But they, uh, I got to put all this other stuff in boxes and then we'll get it organized. It won't, it won't take long. It won't take long at all. Got to give me some pegs for the pegboard. It'll be good. So I guess, man, who's back to go fishing? Also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Yeah, go ahead and subscribe. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. It'll just help. Help us. Help me. Help Hunter. Give us some motivation to keep filming. Sorry, I've been gone for two weeks. How long is it to post? Three weeks. We ain't post a video in three weeks, but been busy. Been doing a lot of stuff recently. It's almost Christmas. About to ramp it back up though. And go Merry fishing. Merry Christmas. I think we're gonna post another one before Christmas. Though. You think so? Mm -hmm. Cool with me. But Merry Christmas, everybody. Yep. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm about to start building some jigs. <laughs>